Hi, this is Vance again. Um, I'm going to show you how to do an HDR image uh, from a single image in Adobe Lightroom version 4. I get this question a lot. Um, this is a train that I had taken a picture of. The adjustments are very simple. On the right panel over here uh, in your develop module, I'm going to change the clarity to 10 on this particular image. I'm going to go all the way down to the sharpening and change this to say 40. Luminosity, I want 40 on this one. 100 on the detail. I want as much detail in the image as possible. Contrast, I'll keep this at 50. And if you want to, the masking, you can change this to say 20. Um, oops, I said 200, not 20. And then what you do, instead of having to use a auto bracketing camera, uh, the camera I took this picture with was a Nikon D7000. And it does have auto bracketing, but I did not want to use it. So, I took a single image, and now I'm going to import it to a plugin for Lightroom. It's, it's a Nikon software. It is EFEX Pro. So, I import the, the image to EFEX Pro. It'll take a minute for Lightroom to transfer this image over so we can do the work on it. On the left hand corner up here you're going to see the progress bar. As a Lightroom moves this image over, the next light will sh the next panel that shows up will be EFEX Pro. Uh, it's a it's a, not a standalone software. It is a plugin for either Photoshop, uh, a Lightroom. So I use it for Lightroom quite a bit, uh, especially when I'm doing HDR images. It makes it a little bit quicker. A little bit easier than, say, Photomatix Pro, even though it's the Photomatix is a very, very good software. Sometimes I don't have the time to take five to ten bracketed photos to make this particular image. So I, what I found is with with this software, Color EFX Pro, it will do just as good as the other software will do with a lot less work to do. So this is what I did. I, I opened it in here, and uh, this is the new Color EF EX Pro version 4. And the first filter that comes up is the Detail Extractor, because this is the last filter that I used. So when you open it up, it automatically brings this one out. So you have three options here. You can change it from Fine, Normal, or Large. Um, on this picture, I just kept it at Fine. I didn't change this at all. And then I click Add Filter. The trees in the background, um, they are hard to see here, but they were green. So I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to go to the left side over here, and I'm going to add a warm green filter to the image, which will bring out some of the color in the, the sky, uh, the trees in the background, which kind of give the, the image a little bit more depth. And hit Add Filter. And at this point, I was, I was really, I was done. I, I didn't want to have to do any more to the image uh, if I wanted to keep it in color. But I was asked to have this actually in black and white. So after I click Add Filter, I move over to the black and white filter for this, this image that I was given. And here I, I chose a Tonal Enhancer to give the image a clear black and white tone across the entire image. So I click Add Filter. And then this was actually all I did. I, I didn't have to do any more than this. I just have to go down at the bottom here and click Save. Now it's going to take the image and import it back into Adobe Lightroom for me. And then I'll be able to show you the comparison of the two images. This was the image that was actually sold. And I'm not sure where it was sold to. Um, it was sold online to go to either a, a, a book, a magazine, a website, um, but there wasn't a lot of work to do as if I would have had to go through and, and use 
all of Lightroom or even all of Adobe Photoshop to get the look that they were requesting from this particular this train. Uh, it's an old steam engine sitting on a dead track. It's just sitting out in the field. But this was the, the coloring that they wanted. I, I could have changed it and gone a little bit darker on um, both sides. Uh, I could have gone from a red to a green, even a blue contrast, but this is what they wanted. So once this is uh, imported the photo back into Lightroom, I'll show you the comparison of the two images and how easy this is actually for you to do. It's just a plug-in. You will have to pay for the plug-in through Nikon or the software from Nikon. But it's well worth it. It's got a, a lot of plugins, very simple to use, uh, very easily done. And now that the software has imported it back into Lightroom for me, this was the original photo that we had started with. Straight out of the camera, the detail is lost up underneath the, the train where you can see that this is actually rusting. This is water that had run down the side of the train, but you can't see it to the black and white with just a single filter you can now start to see the chrome coloring of this particular image or well, if you wanted to go a full HDR image this would be the next step is to go back and just add another filter to bring out the actual color so this is all you have to do you don't there's not a lot of work to do to do HDR um, if you have any questions please feel free to Send me an uh, email. I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll look at HDR a little bit differently than you do now. Uh, it works very well. And thank you for your time. Hope to hear from you soon.